This is the second to last episode of Welcome to Fairmont, Meeting. Welcome to Fairmont is a WKAT production created by Colleen Fries and myself, Alana O'Ryan. If you didn't catch last week's episode or any of those that came before, you might want to look us up on YouTube and listen to those before this one. It's not exactly the best place to start. You can find us online at Welcome to Fairmont if you need to look us up. If you've been around a while or have decided to listen anyway, thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoy it. Fairmont, we come to you today with grave news. You may have already heard, but it saddens me to report that Misty is no longer with us. If you'll recall, a protest was taking place in the lobby of the school at the end of our last show two weeks ago. Shortly after Misty arrived and tried to break things up peacefully, a fight broke out amongst the protesters, which resulted in the death of our friend. I'm Psyche, reporting to you today. And I'm Harmony. We have no community news for you right now, but we have to see this prophecy through. The board was sighted this morning flying back in after their trip to their home planet, which means that the meeting we've been waiting for will happen tonight. I spoke to Carmody earlier, and he assured me that he is prepared to face whatever is going to happen at the meeting tonight, even without his mentor. The meeting tonight will take place at 6, here at the school, and we would like to encourage you all to attend in support of our friend and colleague who has worked so hard this year to make things better for us. I know I will be going, and I'm fairly certain that Harmony and Lydia will be too. We've been told that these meetings usually only last 45 minutes to an hour, and consist of the person proposing the change restating briefly what they aim to change, an opportunity for opposition to speak, and the board's final decision on the matter. The opposition is the part that scares me. Even though the responsible individuals from the riot two weeks ago have been apprehended, there is no evidence that there are no others who will cross that line. And if there are, you can bet they'll be there. Yeah. But we need to come together as a community and as a school in light of this tragedy and make sure that our loss wasn't in vain. If the data we have says anything about the outcome to expect tonight, I'd say that the odds are in our favor, but I'm not sure I'm one to say. I mean, let's talk about the data since there's got to be something in it, right? First, we have the argument that Carmody posed. You all heard it in its simplicity here on our show about a month ago when he was here to share it with us. And if his presentation was as good as he and Misty said it was, then we have that to count on. We've talked about the procedure that goes with convincing the board. Board. No, don't talk about that. What? Why? They're listening. Have you ever wondered what lives in the forests that surrounds our town? Well, now's your chance to find out. The Nature Service Group, in conjunction with the local poltergeist examiners, are funding a three-session learning opportunity to let you know all about the things that might like to eat or tickle you to death in a safe, fun environment. So if you're someone who likes to learn about the natural world around you, be sure to check out their schedule on their website. The Nature Service Group, in conjunction with the local poltergeist examiners, are not responsible for any loss of limb or life in the woods. This is Psyche from WKAT, and I wanted to remind you all that community service is important to a healthy city. Even though I can't leave the school, I make it a point to help out around it, to make it a better environment for everyone who uses it. I wanted to encourage you all to find a way to help someone else out today. We can't all be optimistic, but we don't have to be miserable. Hello, listeners. We're now joined by Lydia, who is here to tell you a little bit about the rise of this oppositional group, who we have been referring to as the Thanophobic Fanatics. In case you were wondering, thanophobic is the phrase that was coined at some point last year to oppose sophobic, which was derived from the ancient Greek word for life. Conversely, thanophobic comes from the ancient Greek word for death. Two weeks ago, I was running some errands in the main office when they started gathering, they, of course, being the thanophobic fanatics you were talking about. I didn't think much of it at first, since people sort of mingle there all the time, especially after school for a little while. Then I started paying attention when they started chanting. Even though group chants aren't that strange in occurrence, it was weird that there were so many voices so quickly. And as I started looking at them, I noticed that they were all wearing the same thing and starting to take on the same characteristics. Once I started thinking about what they were saying, I came back here. I, a zombie, wasn't going to stick around in a place with people like that. You know, I can't help but feel a little responsible. I think we all do. It's not your fault. I know, but if I hadn't... She only went because I told her what was going on. Lydia, we're all thinking of things we could have done differently, and it's nobody's fault. 
This is prophecy and fate and a story probably already set in stone. There was nothing any of us could have done because it's beyond us all. The only thing we can do now is see it through to the end and move on after. As we speak, Carmody is getting ready for the final say he has in this argument, and we need to be ready to help him finish it, one way or the other. You're right, but I still feel guilty. Everyone always feels guilty. Let's just hope that the people who are actually responsible get dealt with justly. That's something people hope for, right? Yes, Psyche. That's a thing that people hope for. Yes. Anyway, we're going to take you briefly to Carmody for today's weather. Afternoon, Fairmont. Your weather outside is overcast with a strong chance of an electrical storm to cloud over the sun for a while. No idea yet how long that will last, but I hope it won't stop you from coming out this evening. Since I won't get to talk to you all again until all this is passed, I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for the support that has gotten me this far. Goodbye, Fairmont. Thanks, Carmody. Until the end of our show here, we'll be talking about the personal preparations you'll need to make in order to survive the meeting tonight. The remainder of this content has been subject to the secret information laws, quote 3234 article 3383. Thank you for your consideration. Welcome to Fairmont is a WKET production produced and performed by Colleen Fries as Psyche and Alana Orion as Harmony, with the voicing talents of Cameron Knopp as Jack Carmody and Lydia Fries as her zombified self. Thanks to everyone who has helped us get to this point in our production, especially McKenna for letting us kill her character. And of course, to you, our listeners. This wouldn't be what it is without you. So tune in in two weeks for our seventh and final episode of Welcome to Fairmont. Happy Nightmares. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at FHS Media, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Welcome to Fairmont, so you can be fully prepared for our next episode. Thanks for listening this long, and until next time, happy nightmares.